And welcome back, everybody. everybody. It's been a long time since we've done a YouTube video. It's been about 10 episodes. Really? <laughs> yeah. I was looking today. And I'm getting them uh, loaded up as quick as I can, guys. It just takes a little bit, and I've been lazy and haven't done it. But we're, this is going to be episode 48, so let's click over to get the personas going. Yeah, you. Okay, you ready? Three, yeah. two, and... And welcome back, everybody. This is Ghost Stories Told from the South, and I am your co-host, Lexi. And I am your host, Stephen LeBooth. You almost forgot your jive stick there, didn't you? Yeah, I said almost said host. <laughs> and this is good old episode 48. Yes, yes. So I want to say that I am not going to be... I'm taking a break from Haunted Places um, and, like, areas, and I'm focusing on, like... Items or Ouija boards or possession stuff like that because it is ghost and paranormal. It's just a different category. She's, she's basically going for like objects, like voodoo dolls and kind of stuff like that. Just kind that. of like so for this first spoiler alert for the first episode, not first episode, for this one, I'm going to be talking about Ouija boards <laughs> and stories and fun facts about them and blah, blah, blah. So, but yeah. I will say, do not mess with them. I mean, if you feel froggy, go ahead, but I wouldn't recommend it. Because them things are sneaky. You don't really know who you're talking to on there. They can pretend like there's someone else. And yeah. If you're world up, if you know what I mean. They can rock your shit. No. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be very, very scared. Yeah. All right. Um. Do you, So how do you want to do this? Do you want to do your stories? And I'll talk about my stuff. Because I feel like we shouldn't do yours and mine like, together. We should do them separate. All right. I guess we could do mine. Excuse me. All of mine today are from Spain. So some of these words are tongue-tied. So if I F them up, I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's going to be a fun podcast, I can already tell you. And this is a real common Korea de Joaquin Costa. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the name of the place, and this is the guy's name. Edgarita Mar Marty. Edgarita Marty was an alleged serial serial killer living in uh, Barcelona, Spain at the beginning of the 20th century. She, oh, it's a chick. <laughs> <laughs> I was effing her name up. Like I said, I'm sorry if I'm screwing these names up, guys. She report, or reportedly uh, abducted poor children from the street and used them for prostitution. That's sad. And you know why people like kill prostitutes and take poor kids and stuff like that? Because their thing, their thing is, huh? No one's gonna miss them. Yeah, that's sad. It's, you know, that's the, just like when prostitutes die, the cops are like, they're prostitutes. No one gives a shit about them. Yeah, that's sad. She also allegedly would murder them and use their blood to make toxic to toxics. T uh, tonics, I'm sorry, would use their blood to make tonics to treat uh, tuberculosis. Okay. <laughs> which is how she earned her nickname, the Vampire of Barcelona. The Vampire of Barcelona, I like that. She was finally caught after kidnapping a girl named Teresa, who was recognized through a window in a Guita Mart. Marta, Marta, or Marta, yeah, Marta, lived at, god dang these Spanish words, <laughs> Cali, Cali Pon, Poniant, Poniant, Cali Pon, Poniant in the Ravel neighborhood, close to Cosa Arm, Amarillo, or whatever, Amarillo, Amarillo, from this is, oh, never mind. Anyways, this is, yeah. Hmm. That's what it looks like? Yeah, that's the street. That was her main street that she cruised up and down. 
Oh, wow. Like I said, sorry if I'm butchering these names up. I don't mean to. I just want okay. to expand if they my... Are, uh, if they're good, not good, if they're active listeners, and they know that we can't talk for really shite on this podcast. Yeah. This is a really, uh, we should have called it Shitty Ghost Stories Told from the <laughs> South. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I wonder if that would fly. Shitty Ghost Stories Told so, from the South. So. With your shitty host. <laughs> And her in this <coughs> <laughs> and his shitty co-host. <laughs> Are y'all ready for some shitty, scary stories? <laughs> we got some shitty ones today. Stop. I ain't writing down the times, but that's all right. I got plenty enough time to edit it. Yeah. Okay. The next one is the Rihanna Sophia Museum. It's one of the most visited museums in Spain. The Reina Sofia also has a uh, black uh, uh, has a black legend. That don't make any sense, but that's what it says. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe it means it's just that creepy. I guess. Yeah. Kind of like people say he's got a dark history. Yeah. It was a hospital from 1603 to 1974 before it was transformed into a museum. During this time, religious orders look after the sick people and the insane. There are misty, misty. There are many testimonials of encounters with the unknown. Groups of sp spiritual nuns have been seen in the central yard. That'd be creepy. Just seeing a bunch of nuns just sitting there. Uh, yeah, especially, I don't know what I would do. I'd be like, I definitely need to lay off the peyote. Yeah. <laughs> the elevators start working even with even when the power's off. Death. Death. What? Why is that moving? What? Why is that moving? What? <laughs> Because <laughs> Max is laying on it. Oh, I didn't know it touched the floor. Okay. Don't be doing that <laughs> shit. That was scaring me. I was like, I didn't want to turn around. I was afraid. Well, the backdrop for the YouTube videos for you guys that's uh, listening to us on the podcast part, y'all just get the audio. Well, we're. Oh my gosh. I shut the front door and they're still barking. <laughs> We got no kids here today, and I thought, great, nice, quiet episode. And Lexi <laughs> decides, we don't need to shut the door. Way to go. It should be fine. Yeah. Well, anyways, <coughs> the backdrop I use for the YouTube videos while we're doing this, the dog's sitting on it, and Lexi's scared because he started <coughs> moving, and I'm like, yeah, because the dog's laying on it. It goes all the way to the ground. I look the opposite way, so. Anyways... Okay, the power on the elevators go off. Uh, when it's off, the elevators still will turn on and stuff. And then they hear voices and moans have been reached in many of the halls, and three bodies were found hidden behind a brick wall during the uh, <coughs> um, renovations of making it from a hospital to a, <coughs> to a museum. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's always lovely. Well, God dang it. All my pages are sticking together. See, my notes are better this week, huh? Yeah, last week if you weren't listening. Yeah, it was they a were... cluster. <laughs> that was a shitty show. That was when I should have said, shitty show, show from a shitty show, shitty show. I don't think you're okay. Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go over the sand. Chris... The ball, Christo, San Cristobal Fort near Pampalana. Okay, near Pampalana. <coughs> I thought that said Pompeo for a second. <coughs> I was like, no, that's not right. Okay. Also known as the Exabaga. Exaba. Exiba Fort on the mountain of the same name. <laughs> That's fucking something I'd do. Instead of saying the name again, just go, it's name. 
named after the same <laughs> mountain of the same name. Yeah, the uh, ancient ba uh, ba basin was re redeployed. De redeployed during the Civil War for one of the worst proposal propose possible proposals possible as a military as a military prison for the uh, distant senators and directors in general franco's regime indeed many pop-up prisons in the time of the uh, conflict were a historical heritage site they are now visit they now have visitors and attractions for the uh for uh their own sh own safe say shake that don't make any sense their own sake oh sake <laughs> <laughs> one of the most famous yeah now see this is a tongue twister one of the most famous Matt Mont de juice Mont 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 juice Mont de juice castle in Barcelona <coughs> at San pistol hundreds of capt captured soldiers fled a massacre Mass, uh, mass, a massacre, and uh, and although a dozen survived, the well-documented prison break was around three hundred that died either in captivity or during the fight when they were uh, caught and executed. It's mm. always nice. Visitors to the air to the area swear they have seen the ghost of unsettled prisoners. Who met met there and either between the uh, and per and what Impen impenetrable impenetrable solid stone walls of fortress are in their attempt to get away, still floating around with no hope of peaceful crossing over, despite uh, uh, various governments in attempt in attempts in more recent years to offer a nut a nut uh, a, a nut uh, and it and then anointment 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 apparition for the uh, anyways skip all that it's at the top of the hilly. Okay. At the moment, the fort is closed to the public, but there, but those who are equally kind are hiking as a, on a on a hit on a history hike can have the opportunity to tread through the path of those who got away or nearly got away. A terrifying route known as La Froge. De La Froge de Frotes, whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Through the hills around uh, 53 kilometers long in four, four stages. It's popular with the tourists and the locals. During the route, you can see the several mis uh, the several makeshift uh, unceremonial graves dotted along the path where some of the pa uh, prisoners captured my captured uh, mid fight and shot were burned oh god could you imagine hiking through that and being like these were people was burned mm, that's always fun to hike through right <laughs> yeah let's go hiking through. i don't think i'd go hiking there if i lived in spain me neither the uh, main entrance of the fortress okay never mind I said, well, the main interest is shown in this photo. That's why I didn't say it. But anyway, this place <laughs> has a dark history. Apparently, it was a, uh, what do you call it, a military prison, I guess, during the uh, civil wars and stuff in Spain. Mm. So, a lot mm. of people died and got hurt to did. Sorry if I'm effing these names up. I just wanted to cover another, cover another country, and I was like, hey, Spain's cool. Yeah, like, see? That right there is a famous... They use that in everything. Um, 
And I just want to say career. Carry. Carrier dis carrier disgestric e. It's um, I think uh, it's red, red, white, yeah. right. I don't know how to say that. Neither of us do, so we're so sorry. Yeah. Okay, but this place is in Spain. It's a uh, mysterious alleyway located just a couple of minutes walk from Palesa de Catalonia. Palesa de Catalonia. See, I got one right. Its history dates back to the medieval Barcelona when it was uh, situated outside the city walls. It was there that an astro astrologer and scorer called Astraca Sanguinaria. Astraca Scanneria. Sounds like I'm saying diarrhea, but I'm not. <laughs> lived, <laughs> lived during the 15th, 15th century. He was famous for his black stone called Pedro Esconara and a powder and a powder for the purpose of healing rabbits and bites. Arcania plagues mounted on plague plaque is mounted on its wall. To commit the uh, mystical history of the street. It's apparently this dude was into uh, black magic stuff and all that. <laughs> That's always fun. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of streets get haunted over here <coughs> by people and stuff. So, I don't think I'll be going to Spain and just walking down the streets in the middle of the night. Yeah, probably not a good idea. Now, we're going to go over the University of Cordova. In Andalusia, Spain. Andalusia is a rich historic region of Spain. The university or its different schools are also very old. They are on the list of the top 10 haunted places in Spain. Income and it said the old part of the law business and economics economy school is haunted by several gro several ghosts. Say that again two times <laughs> fast. Several ghosts. As the school was used to be a hospital for a long time, and then it got, you know, the school bought it and turned it into a dorm or whatever it is. People have encountered female spirits, women who died giving uh died at birth giving you know uh, in labor. And there is an angry soldier who roams there too. Just like rum. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you got a bunch of pissed off ladies who were died who died to you know giving birth to their child and they're dead and then you got a pissed off uh, soldier running around. <laughs> well, yeah, that's always fun. Now this the name of this place was really weird. The House of Seven Chimneys. House of Seven Chimneys. Yeah. So apparently it's got seven chimneys. On the down low. Okay. This building is. This, this building is worthy of one of EA Poe's stories. It's located beside the Grand Via. The ghost of Alina haunts the building since her death in the 16th century. The legend says she was beautiful. She was a beautiful woman in love with the king's son, the future Philip II. When she got pregnant, her lover had her killed to avoid this to avoid the scandal. Well, because back then you were, you know, you got married who your parents told you to. Yeah. And all that. Didn't have a choice. Yeah. Her body was never found, and her father was the. Uh, main suspect and he hung himself from a beam in, in their house oh. ever since then her ghost appears every now and then on the roof at night seeking justice for her crime oh god so that's why you'll see her own oh my god the roof that's fucking weird you don't really see them on the goddamn roof no you never I would flip my shit that would be something Just new seeing out on the roof and you see a little ghost yeah. I was looking out my window and seeing a ghost on my roof, uh, on my neighbor's roof. 
Okay, okay I got sorry, one I more. I saw the dog walking next door, and there's no one over there. I'm going to be doing the Rockefort Metro Station. The Rockefort is a metro station where TB, TMB workers dread to be assigned at night. After multiple suicides, including four within the space of uh, one month. Okay. It became known as the Cursed Station in the mysterious places in Spain. Ghosts nice. are said to have been walking on the uh, platforms and along the tracks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the paranormal activity is even reported being picking, picking up by the surveillance cameras at the station. So the, the surveillance cameras have been picking stuff up. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> like, Could you imagine days. going out there and seeing something but, you know, it wasn't there? Yeah, I don't well, know what I would do. There was it's, there's it's one uh, video on YouTube. It was on that uh, called On Paranormal. And it was, guys, it was inside. And they said, hey, Told the security guards outside, go over to such and such area and look, there's some woman walking around like a shadow of a woman walking around. Nope. And the guys outside couldn't see it. Hell no. <clears throat> but you could see it clear as day on the camera and the guys outside are going. There's nothing here. What there's nothing here. What are y'all talking about? And they're like, there, there's something on the camera. And they're like, but there's nothing here. So that's what the, uh, they're picking up the spirits on the uh, cameras. Oh, well, before it was uh, part of the subway network, it was a uh, space uh, served as a uh, refuge uh, as a refuge during the uh, Civil War. So when Spain had their Civil War, it was like a refuge place. All right. <laughs> well, um, sorry again if I butchered some of them names up. I'll yeah, try to I'm. We all always all apologize. So now that Dad has done all his stuff, so now we're going to go on to mine. Okay. I did some stuff on the Ouija board, and I couldn't go back, like, to the exact history and figure out, like, when it officially started, because that's what I wanted to do, get some history on it, and, like, the do's and the don'ts, some facts, the rules, and some stories, and then talk about our opinions on it, so... I'm going to start out with the history-ish stuff I have on it. Um, I also have... Hang on. Give me one sec. Did, did you just knock? That was you hitting the mic over there with your hand moving. Oh, okay. So, God, I you're got... you're really, like, scared tonight, aren't you? <laughs> I have... A little bit of history on it, and then I'm going to do some facts, and then we'll do stories. And then we're going to do a live Ouija board right now. No, I'm just no. kidding. We're not doing that. <laughs> so I don't play with that crap, guys. Yeah, please don't. But all right, so this is about the origin of the Ouija board and some facts. All right, so spiritualism, spirit, spirit, oh, blah, 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 ah, wow, Alexi, not even two seconds into my part, I'm already butchering Yeah, you're it. already going, ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. spirit little, spirit little, <laughs> spirit little loving you, spirit little <laughs> what the heck, goodness. at least I had an excuse, I had some funky Spanish words I was trying to say, spiritualism, that's what I'm trying to say, spiritualism, you're just trying to speak English, Okay, spiritualism and pre Ouija methods. So, Ouija boards have their roots in spiritualism. Um, and That's spiritualism. Very spiritual. <laughs> stop. Began in the United States in the late 1840s. Um, the new movement was led by mediums who claimed to be intermediary. Who claimed to be intermediaries between the living and the dead. That's what a medium is, if you didn't know. Um. There in this talks about how mediums evolved and like came about. So I'm gonna say that real quick. Um, there was a number of ways that mediums mediums made followers believe that like they were communicating. Fudge, uh, 
They were trying to talk so fast. We ain't, we got all night to tell I, these stories. We I'm ain't excited. got to try to break a record. Um. Anyway, well, she, she has been gone for what two or three episodes. Yeah, I'm excited. She hasn't really got to do much. So she, this is like her first time doing the research, and she's like, just, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, there was a number of ways that mediums made followers believe that they were communicating messages from those who had passed. You know, like the dead. Well, one of the things was table turning. And it, um, it was whenever the table moved or was knocked on the floor in response to the letters called out from the alphabet. Another method was using planchettes, and if you don't know, that's the little thing that's on the Ouija board. Um, it's a heart-shaped device with two wheels at one end and one pencil at the point. That's what I guess it lo used to look like, because I don't really look at that anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Um, users would pace... pace? place their fingers on the device, which would be guided by spirits who would write messages of the alpha, you know, with the letters. Um, both methods were problematic because table turning too too long and the planchette writing was hard to decipher, I guess. Cause now it isn't, but like if it goes really, really, really fast and you're like, what are you saying? <laughs> but um, yeah, um, rise of the talking board. So this thing used to be called the talking board. So I'm going to refer, refer, reference that right now. The talking board. Yeah. That so makes the sense. The board, the talking board. Okay, so in 1886, the New York Daily Times... That's a lie. The New York Daily Tribune... Tribune. Tribune. I don't know why I said Times, but... <laughs> um, reports it on a new talking board being used in Ohio. It was 18 by 20 inches and featured the alphabet numbers, the words yes, no, good evening, and good night. And the only other necessary object was this planchette, and they described it being a little table with three or four legs. Wait, with being three or four inches high with three legs. Um, three, four legs. And the spirits could use that to, you know, identify letters. So, and it's pretty similar to, you know, how it is now, like that early didn't change. So, this is how it was described to play it then. And it pretty much is like the same. So, um, operating the board is similarly, similarly <laughs> easy. You take the board, put it on your lap, while another person... <laughs> I can't talk! So, you take this board, put it on your lap, um, and then there's this other person either sitting down with you, like to just be there, or to play the game with you. And you each touch the little planchette with your thumb and your forefinger at each corner next to you. Then the question is asked, are there any communications? And then, like, it starts moving and you're like, oh my gosh, did you move it? And the other person's like, no, I didn't do it, I swear. Um, so, and you just keep on asking questions like that and then, you know, see, and like now, or I don't know why they said lap, because like, you put it on a table and you sit across from the person. And then, like, you do two fingers. I've heard. Not this. <laughs> so it did change a little bit, but, like, they I've work. I've always done two. Yeah. Wait, I'm what? Least, I've always done two. You've done a Ouija board? Everybody's done a Ouija board at least once. God, <laughs> don't sit there and act surprised. All, oh, my God. Like, I've never done one, Dad. <laughs> Whatever. You like to go into abandoned schools and try it out. Oh my gosh, I gotta tell that story on here. <laughs> Every time I pass by that part of the school, because I gotta pass there to go to Jackson's practice or a home game. And I'm like, yeah, I remember that. Oh, Lorsh. <coughs> Lorsh. Okay, so this is, uh, that's a little history that I got on it. Now I'm gonna do the <coughs> facts real quick, because I got some, like, stories, but also some rules. And I, yes, I'm going to go over the rules, too, because people don't seem to think that they're important. And, um, and they are. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it right. So, let's start off with some facts. The Ouija board got its name after it was asked, you know, what it should be called. And whenever it was asked, um, the board responded with, good luck. And I guess they translated that, and in another language, it meant Ouija. <laughs> huh. So, the board so means good, good luck. luck board. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. And well, then it don't I, bring any good luck. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And then I didn't know this, but in uh, World War One, almost every household in the U.S. had an Ouija board. And then in 1922, the Ouija board sold even more, like it outsold Monopoly. 
Oh my god, there's that many kids playing with them? Yeah. Yep. Um, and then this is kind of what we said earlier. You know, the Ouija board comes with a set of rules, which is often ignored by most players. And ignoring these rules can lead to demonic possession. <laughs> yes, everything I've ever seen a movie on, that's what it always starts. It, Someone they didn't messing follow with the rules. anything part of the rule, and they're like, oh, I forgot to close the door. Yeah. So, the Ouija board marketer, William Fueled, I think, fell to his death while supervising uh, supervising the construction of a three-story Ouija board factory in Baltimore. So, um, it, <laughs> the, like, maker of this thing freaking died. <laughs> Not made him lots of money. Yeah. Um, and then a great number of deaths and murders have been blamed on the Ouija boards. Many well, yeah. of them, yeah. And it's <laughs> Stay, uh, after you'll have to hear about. We'll have to get Ashley on here to tell her story about uh, where Ashley's dad lives. Well, where her friends do in Man Mango or whatever Mingo. it is. Minko. There's one uh, story there about a Ouija board girl got possessed or something and killed somebody or something. Weird. Dang. And she was running on broke ankles or some shit. Yeah. No. Also, if you hear that growling or like whimpering, our dogs are humping, so we have to separate them. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Every time they give them a, we give them a bath, they think it's they're like, yeah, yeah. Think it's a freaking orgy. Yeah, it's really gross. Anyway, so here's some like rules, and I have like, I think twenty something, because like each site says something different, and everybody says something different. But pretty much all of <laughs> these are like the same. But yeah, just. We'll summarize at the end. Alright, so the first rule is to never play the Ouija board alone, you know? Playing by yourself leaves you more vulnerable to an evil spirit coming through um, the or from the other side. So always make sure you play with one or more friends or family or whoever. One of the many things that goes wrong in all these stories is somebody plays it by themselves. Oh, yeah, they tell it always starts in the movies. They're like, I want to know what happens. They'll be in a goddamn house <laughs> that they found dirt cheap, and there'll be a fucking Ouija board in the attic, and there'll be some kid or a grown-up who will go, uh, who are you? You want to talk? Yeah. And they'll start fucking with it. <laughs> I just super punched the mic. They'll Sorry. start playing with it and then waking shit up. And Yep. <laughs> And then this one, I didn't really know this one, but never use the Ouija board in a graveyard. Using an Ouija board in a graveyard or somewhere where a violent murder took place can cause a malufit, a maluvent. That's not how you say that word. Mal I don't know. I don't even know what you're trying to say. Malevent, a very, very bad, violent spirit. <laughs> bad, bad, <laughs> Came through the bad. To come, yeah, so like, it will allow that to come through the board. So just, you know, don't play at a graveyard. Play down the street at your, your best friend mom's play house. Play at your... No, don't uh, do that. I'm joking. Whoever's house, you, like, whoever you don't like, whoever and is a jerk to And then dump them as being friends. Go, go to their house and play it. And then be like, Encourage oh, we can't be your friend be, anymore. And then keep it there and go, oh, you can have it. Play with it. Yeah. So this one, this was in the Ouija board movie. One of the many ones, there's a lot. But I remember this one specifically. So the rule is never burn the Ouija board. But some people are like, you have to burn it. That's how you get rid of the evil. So apparently, a Ouija board is said to scream if you try and burn it. And anyone who hears the board scream only has 36 hours to live. Man... And stuff like that, I want to try. I want to always try it to see if it's real. But then I'm like, well, what if it's real? Then I'm fucked. Yeah. You, you. <laughs> then I'm screwed. I only got a couple hours to live because it was right. Yeah. So people say that like if they try to burn it, it ends right back out. Right book, right back up into their house. So like burning it apparently doesn't work. But the proper way to apparently dispose of it is break it into seven pieces and bury it. <laughs> I feel like that would have been. Someone probably have to do that one. Um, this is another important one that people most fuck up on. Never leave the planchette on the Ouija board. Oh yeah. It leaves a portal open to the other side and it'll just like come through and Whenever it wants. Yeah. It's like, oh, you don't want to talk, but I do. Um 
Also, never ask whenever you or someone else you love or like care about is going to die. Because, one, you don't really need to know. Like, I feel like if we know we're going to die, we're going to be obsessing over yeah. when we're going to die and make try, you know. So, or also, like, let's say, like, you get shot to death or, like, you get ran over. Do you really want to be knowing that <laughs> walking yeah, about in life? I don't want to know how I'd go. I don't want to go out know when any of my family or No, me go. neither. Just so. keep it a secret. I don't want to know shit. Yep. Also, this is another rule that everyone fucks up on. Always say goodbye. So there's yes. some points where, like, I guess, like, the spirits won't let you say goodbye, but that's whenever you forcefully put it over goodbye, and then you move the planchette off the board, put everything back up in the box, and you're good to go. Yes, don't leave it. No, uh, you know, always say goodbye. Never, yeah. ever. Um, yeah, so... Do you be nice? All right. So I'm not going to like go through each of these little thingies. I'm just because there's 13 more rules right here, but I'm just going to say like the big old headlines on them. So always be respectful. You know, you never want to like disrespect the spirit and pro provoke it because like it's stronger than you and smarter yeah. than you. Um, Who wants to be belly good? No. Also, do not believe everything a spirit says. Like, let's say you ask when you're going to die or, like, someone you love is going to die. They could be lying, and you could be causing yourself stress for no reason. Or they could be like, yeah, I'm a little girl named Little Debbie. And, then be and like, I'm only Boom. seven years old. But she's really a demon from hell. Yeah, like, literally. Yeah, I've heard that happen, too, to people. They're like, but I was talking to this guy, Freddie. He seems so nice. Yeah. Um, so... Bad questions to ask the spirits. I found some bad questions that you should never ask. So, the first one is, when will I or someone else die? Will I get sick? Am I sick now? Are you an evil spirit? Yeah. How do you die? How did you die, I mean? Can I talk to a demon? Do you want to hurt me? Can you possess me? <laughs> Basically, you when you're doing an Ouija board thing, you have to, like, Take have a good, serious. positive mindset you can't go into it thinking oh this is bullshit because then you're yeah. gonna bring bad energy into it and bring a bad ghost that's what they want yeah and you don't want that so um <laughs> this is also awesome. people fuck up when they do this they use it in their home yeah you don't see, do that yeah. you don't use it in your home or a friend's house you yeah. go like to a nice park or somewhere or something like something good happened or like where you just good energy and just do it <laughs> or go to a friend's house. Go go go, or go to someone's house you don't like and play with it there, and then leave it. And then just leave. Yeah. And tell them to play with it. And tell them, oh, it's okay if you don't tell them goodbye. You don't have to. I wouldn't. <laughs> uh -huh, that'd be so shitty. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be rude. funny though. It's rude. You always tell it goodbye. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I feel like most people mess up, like, right there because, like, they don't follow the rules. Well, especially when they get a bunch of kids together and they're and like... they're all like, oh, this is... Or like, this is funny. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. Look. Okay. So now I'm going to be talking about some stories. So I have a few that are, like, long-ish stories that are also kind of, like, what people broke of the rules and what happened to them. So, you know... Also, just kind of like weird stories that are pretty cool. So, stories that are weird, but they're pretty cool. That means they suck. Bite me. <laughs> All right. So, this one is about a Ouija board. It's just a hobby. That is the actual title. Okay. So, this story is about a Ouija board. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry, okay? I was itching. Um, if the tag in my bra was itching my underpit, and I had to, my underpit, my underpit, and I had to scratch it because it was hurting. Anyway, this Ouija board story is about a girl named Cindy. She was only 13. She was a middle child, and uh, a middle child, <laughs> and her family was like a big, devoted Christian family. Um, they lived in the country part of northern Maine. She had three older sisters, a younger sister, a younger brother, and at some point during the 8th grade, oh wait, 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 yeah, so that's her family history. Some point during the 8th grade, a friend let Cindy borrow her Ouija board. Um, one weekend, that weekend, Cindy and her older sisters played with the board. They did it in secret late at night because they, you know, 
didn't Knew want her parents being, yeah. And also because they You're were playing like, with the devil. Yeah. And so the board apparently like mesmerized since Cindy. She got home an hour before everybody else did every day. So she, for the hour, she would literally talk to this board all the time and just do everything with it. She had this list of questions that she just like got and she wanted to ask the board. So um, that's where she messed up because she started playing alone. <laughs> yeah, don't ever do it alone either. Yeah, don't. Um, so one time, um, she the first, it was this is the first time I think that she played alone, but um, she got the you know the board set up. They got her fingers on the planchette, and she was like, "Is there anybody here? Or if you're here, is do something?" And the planchette spelled out hi and Cindy was like <clears throat> what <laughs> um she said hi who are you and it spelled out Jake well um after that Cindy was like oh wow Jake because she had a friend who died in a car accident in the fourth grade and she thought it was her friend and she was like oh my gosh is this really you and the points are moved to yes well um it was No. She talked with Jake for like about an hour every Not day after from school. State Farm either. <laughs> I was thinking that. Um so after like a few days, um just he didn't sound like himself and Cindy said that he just like just by the second week everything was more angrier and dirtier and darker. Um by the second week she thought this isn't Jake, this is something else. So, by the end of the second week, the entity reveals itself as a demon and threatens Cindy that if she told anyone about her conversations, she would die. And then that Friday night when her sisters got home, they found Cindy curled up in a corner crying. And, um, <laughs> she had to go to a mental facility for a week. Oh my god. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, because she messed with the demon. Dang, what well, was it in the house or just Yeah. Oh wait, no. So I guess it didn't come out of the board. It didn't really say like what happened after that. I guess her sisters found out and her parents and they took her to a mental hospital because she was just like so traumatized. See kiddos, that's what happens when you don't play by the rules on shit. Or you're going, hey, hey, hey look at me, I'm having fun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one um, this might have to be a two-parter because we're already getting at 45 minutes and I still have a lot to go. But it's okay. I'm okay That's fine. That. We can always do a two-party. Because mine can be a two-parter, but yours still have to. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to tell this one story and then we'll see where we're at with time. So this is about not being able to hide secrets from the board. So one summer, three middle school boys discovered an Ouija board in a trash bin outside a local apartment building. Tom, the oldest, was um, really rude to his younger uh, younger friend, Josh, and he would often punch Josh, like, you know, like, in the arm, like, jokingly, being like, what's up, buddy? Yeah. But he would do it so hard that it would hurt Josh because he was so much younger and smaller. Um, and then he would just call him stupid and a retard all the time. And then the third boy, Chris, would, like, not get abused by him because, like, he would just sit there and be silent. So, like, he didn't get messed with. Well, that summer, whenever the, that's just, I, you have to know that stuff, but the, that summer when the boys found the Ouija board, they took it to Tom's house, where he was alone 99% of the time. Um, his father was always working, and his mom had passed away, and three boys sat in the middle of the living room with their hands on the planchette. Um, after 20 minutes of waiting, nothing happened, they got bored. When they were about to give up, the planchette uh, budged, and it finally spelt getaway. So... Um, you know, just casually playing the Ouija board. Oh, this isn't fun. Nothing's happening. And then get away. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd get the heck out of there and throw that thing. Well, so Tom, the oldest, was like, I live here. What are you talking about? I'm not going to leave. And it, they spelled out now. And Chris was like, what does that mean? And then Chris goes, where should we go? And then spelled out. Uh, the go the word spelled out it hurts, and Tom goes this is stupid, um and then looked at his friends and I was like you guys are doing this stop it, um, and all of them took their hands off 
the board. And so then Tom was, because so they made, so he made Chris take his hands off the board. So it was just Tom and Josh. So then Tom was like, who's, let me ask, that was a question only you would know. So then Josh goes, who's the person that keeps hitting me? And Josh thought it would be Tom, because obviously, like I said earlier, that Tom would like walk up to him and punch yeah. him in the arm. Well, it said, ask Tom. And then Tom goes, this is stupid. And the board spelled out dad. And Chris and all the boys were like, what? And spelled out dad again. And then when they tried to ignore it, when they tried to ignore it, it spelled out dad for a third time. And then he, Tom, jumped up from the room, ran in the way and crying. So come to find out, this kid's dad was beating him on the side. And that's why he was being abusive towards his friends. Oh, God. That's the only, like, <laughs> love that, he knew. That, and the board told everybody, and yeah. He was like, son of a... Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, you can't keep secrets from the um, Ouija board, apparently. Well, okay, we're at 45 minutes. So, what do you want to do? You want to do our closings and then this can be... Yeah, because I got stuff ready for next week already, too. All right. This printer has been so handy, yes. guys. Oh, God. So, next it's week for my best. stuff, it's going to be the wrapping up of the, the Ouija board. And it's going to be some haunted items. So, haunted items. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what Dad's going to talk about, but it's okay. More Spain stuff. More tongue twister stuff. More stuff to make me go blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. But all right, we're going to edit this um, and go spend some dad and daughter quality time. But we will see you guys next Remember week. Remember now, go check us out on Spotify, uh, Stitcher, iHeart, Amazon, YouTube. I'm Basically still catching that all up. We're pretty much like, on everywhere, everywhere now. Check out our uh, Facebook page. Instagram, and uh, yeah, but y'all keep kicking a little, hitting them like buttons and download buttons, and we appreciate all the downloads we're getting. We're up to almost seventeen hundred yes. downloads. Yes, that's not bad for our first year. No, God, it's actually really good if we can hit like two thousand before. I can't wait up. till oh God, if we can hit two thousand before, before our first May. year's up. Yeah, it's like May. Towards the end of the May is when our anniversary is. It's fucking crazy. Yes, it is. Yeah. Don't feel like a year. It don't feel like a year. I don't know. Just wait in a couple of years and we're going to have like three or four. Be year three or four. It's so crazy because we started this because of quarantine. Yeah. Because like everybody got laid off and didn't have a job. I couldn't get a job. And like. We just started doing these podcasts <laughs> and stuff. And now it's like everything's getting back to normal. And we're like, ah, oh, shit. But I don't want to stop doing it because we like doing it. Yeah. Just sucks because like yeah. I am getting into adulthood, so like I'm not able to do everything I want. All the time. But that's why I got the printer. The printer's been our lifesaver. Because with the kids getting back into sports and everything opening back up, it's kind of hard for me to sit back here and research for hours on end like I used to. Yeah. So. But. But it's fun. We're gonna keep doing it though. Yes, but yes, yes. We you, are. If you have been listening to this. This has been Ghost Stories Told from the South, and I am your host, Stephen Lebooth. <laughs> and I am your co-host, Lexi <laughs> Lebooth. <laughs> we guys will see you later. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. All right, guys. We'll see you all later. Oh, see you on the next one. Still on. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Next time we'll do a uh, 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 pro cam. Okay. A GoPro. GoPro. Yeah. <laughs> GoPro. Okay. Yeah. Bye. We'll see you Bye. later. Bye.